Hello and welcome. Welcome to Quilt Conversations Live. I'm Geraldine Wilkins, the Living Water Quilter, and I am pleased to be with you today. Today is a special day. I am live on Amazon and on Clover's YouTube channel. That's right. I'm live in two locations because we are starting a new series, a new series called craft and sewing tool chest. What is in your tool chest? And I am happy to be working with Clover to bring to you some of the tools that are in my tool chest and maybe some are in yours. We're going to look at a few. We're going to look at some that may be new to you, new to me, or some that are tried and true Clover favorites. Now you're probably wondering, Who is she? Who is Geraldine Wilkins? Well, I'm a crafter just like you. I'm a quilter and I love crafts as well. I love to sew and I love to share with my students. I'm also a national educator and teacher. I quilt at quilt shows. I love to share tools, task specific tools to help us complete our projects. Hello, Deneen. So glad you're here in Illinois. And Wilda, welcome. Welcome to Quilt Conversations Live. I'm so glad that you're here. Welcome, welcome. You are joining us from YouTube. So glad you're here. Hello, Wilda. Thank you for dropping by. We are going to have a good time talking about some of our Clover favorites. Let me know in the chat. Are you a Clover user? Do you use Clover sewing and crafting tools? And if so, let us know what is your favorite tool. Hello, Barbara. How are you? So glad you're here. Welcome, welcome. Let us know what is your favorite Clover tool, a tool that you have in your tool chest. So, While you're thinking about that, I'm going to let you know that we are going to go live once a month on the Clover channel and on Amazon to talk about our craft and sewing tools in our tool chest. And if you want to mark your calendar, I've put some dates together for you. Here are the dates. Today is September 14th. Next month will be October 12th. It's every Wednesday, 2 p.m. Pacific Time and 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. November 9th, December 14th, January 11th, and February 8th. So mark your calendar so that you can join us and we can talk about the tools that we use for craft and sewing to help us not only get the job done, but to have fun doing it. There's nothing like having the right tool for the right task. Sometimes we don't have the right tool and we have frustration. And that's one of the things that I love to share with my students. I like to take them from frustration to fabulous. All right. So uh, Barbara says her favorite tool is a seam ripper. I have a love-hate relationship with a seam ripper, Barbara. I love it for the thing that it does, (laughs) but I don't enjoy the process of having to take out seams, but I guess we live and learn, right? So what is the first tool we're going to talk about today? Now that you have your dates, I'm going to hide that and we're going to talk about one of my favorites. I have been a Clover user for a number of years. Yes, this is sponsored by Clover and I'm thankful for our partnership together, but I've been a Clover fan for a long time. What about you? How long have you been a Clover fan? Let us know. You don't have any Clover tools. Well, I hopefully we can change that because we're going to go through several today. And the first one are Wonder Clips. Have you heard of Wonder Clips? I love Wonder Clips. Let's take a look. That's the first item for my friends on Amazon. We are talking about Wonder Clips. And I like to save the packaging so that you can see what it looks like when you get it. This is a package of 10 clips. And I always recommend read the instructions. 
so that you get the most out of every tool you add to your tool chest. When you open the package, oh, 30 years, okay, wonderful. Hello, Sherry, so glad you're here. Welcome from Oklahoma, so glad you're here. All right, let me see if I can get that up. All right, oh, there we go. So remember, you want to look at the instructions and we have some in the back, the features, and then when you open the inside, you have some additional benefits. So always read that, but I'm gonna share some of that with you right now. I like the Clover Wonder Clip for many reasons. One, hello, Jeanette. So glad you're here. Welcome. Jeanette is on Amazon. She has joined us, ladies. She's on Amazon. Here is the Wonder Clip. Now, look at the curved design right here, then the flat design. It has a spring on the inside. The spring is such that you can open this very wide so that you can hold fabric, multiple layers of fabric for easy positioning. It will hold it in place. And the spring helps with that. Another thing that helps hold it in place, I'm going to turn this upside down and hopefully you can see it. On the inside, there are like three little knobs there. Those also help to grip whatever it is you wanna hold in place. So the spring and those little grips help hold it in place. Now, Wonder Clips are great for using instead of pins, like when you're sewing vinyl or leather or anything like that. Now, one of the things that's neat about this, on the bottom, this clear side, it's flat. A flat surface, it can glide over. And what's that flat surface? It's our sewing machine bed. Let's take a look at this little video I have for you to show you how that works. Okay, so I am using the Wonder Clips instead of pins for binding that I'm putting around a tote. I've already stitched the top portion and I wanna now stitch, fold over and stitch the binding around the edge of the tote. I'm gonna use a special foot. I'm gonna use a foot that has a center guide. It's like a ditch foot if you're quilting, right? It has a guide so that it will guide exactly where I want it to stitch. So we're gonna see that changed out. All right. Oh, no worries, Deneen. No problem. Oh, Deneen, you have the hot ruler. All right. Wonderful. I'm so glad. So now that I have the foot exchanged, I'm going to bring in the tote so I can stitch down that binding. And I can leave the Wonder Clips on up to the point that I get to the needle. Now I'm gonna position that center guide right there along the edge and my needle is lined up. And the Wonder Clips help because it's going to keep the position of the binding as I stitch. And I can go all the way up to the foot before I remove the clip. You see how I'm just removing the clip just before I get to the needle. Yes, that is one of the great benefits of the Wonder Clip. Isn't that a great tip? I want to show you something else that's neat about this Wonder Clip. This is the original. Now they come in multiple sizes. Today we're looking at the original Wonder Clip. I'm going to go back to my overhead camera. On the bottom, can you see there are some lines on there? Those are measurements. 3 16th is the first measurement. The next one is a quarter inch. And the next one is 3 8 But when you put this clip on the very edge and put it in all the way, it is a half inch. Let me show you with the ruler. All right, so we have a ruler here and I wanna show you, I'm putting it all the way in. 
you can see the edge of the wonder clip is along the edge of that half inch line. Isn't that fantastic? Hopefully you can see that. Hello, Gidget. Wonderful. So glad that you're here. Welcome to our first, I'm so excited. This is our first tool chest with Clover here on Amazon Live and also on Clover's YouTube channel. And we're talking about the Wonder Clip and how on the bottom we have some measurements so that we can stack the Wonder Clips right next to each other to position our fabric in the exact spot, the, the distance we want. So when we put it all the way on, it's going to be a half inch. Then the very first line from this edge is three sixteenths. So when I put it on that line, it's three sixteenths from the edge of the ruler in. The second line on the bottom is going to be a quarter inch. Then the third line is, which is way, it's way back here. The third line is three eighths. Isn't that fantastic? I love that. Oh, you're welcome. My pleasure. I'm glad you're getting something out of this. It's good to know um, how we can benefit from these tools. We want tools in our tool chest that are going to help us with our projects to make them easier, right? Here's an example with the with a binding, how you would clip it on, clip it in place. And because of that round top, the portion right here that's round, it's going to go right over the bulk of that fabric, but also hold it in place. I love having that kind of option. And I, of course, I can use the measurements on the back to position this exactly where I want. So they all line up exactly in the right spot and the exact same spot. all three in the same spot because I'm lining up it up with the line on the Clover Wonder Clip. All right, so that's one of the first ones. If you have Wonder Clips, let us know. Have you used them? Do you like them? Do you think it's something you can use? Do you make tote bags? Do you bags? Do you bind your own quilts? Wonder Clips are perfect for that. All right, so that is the first item. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm happy to share uh, and answer questions. What's next in our lineup for today? The next item is a sweet. <laughs> it's called a sweet and sharp macaron. Have you heard of a macaron before? Now, I have to confess, when I first read the name of this tool, I thought it said macaroon because I have a sweet tooth. <laughs> Do you have a sweet tooth? <laughs> yes, you can use some of these. Right, Denine. These are great tools, the Wonder Clips. Now, if you are on Amazon and you're looking in the carousel, in the carousel below on Amazon, for those of you on YouTube, it's a line of tools that are specific to our show today. So the first one in that carousel are the Wonder Clips, and they are 46% off today on Amazon. Hey, Wilda, yes, you've been using Clover products since the 1960s. <laughs> Fantastic, Wilda. You are a true fan of Clover. Fantastic. Wonderful. All right. So Wilda says her favorites. Oh, she has a list of favorites. She, do I dare show her list of favorites? All right, here we go. Here's her list. Wonder Clips, Point and Turner, Patchwork Pins, the Hot Ruler, the Flexible Rubber Thimbles. <laughs> she has a whole list of Clover tools that she loves. Fantastic. Hold it position stiletto. Oh my goodness, Wilda. Fantastic. All right. So the next item I started to talk about, it's the sweet and sharp macaron with one O. And it is a dessert. A macaron is a dessert. It's a cookie. 
and you know the flavor of the cookie by its color. So green would mean it's like a pistachio or lime, and the pink would be raspberry. So it's two cookies with a filling in the middle. And Clover took its tips and its design of this, this tool with the dessert, the macaroon. Let me move this over. Hold on just a minute. There we go. All right, so here it is. Again, I like to show you the original packaging. This is how you will get it. And I was going to tell you that when I first saw this, I put it an O and I called it a macaroon because I love coconut macaroons, which is also another dessert. The only difference in the spelling is one letter, but the ingredients are definitely different. <laughs> So I love macaroons. Oh, right, Kitchen. I'm so glad you mentioned that, that you didn't know about the measurements on the back of the Wonder Clips. I hope that's going to be good for you, that you'll be able to use that information. This is the Sweet and Sharp Macaron. And you see, it mimics the dessert. It mimics the dessert that you make. And it is the raspberry. Even on the packaging, it says raspberry. So you can get raspberry or you can get the green color, pink or green. On one side, there are letters and they spell clover. The other side is blank. It doesn't have anything on it it's blank and that is the magnetic side so i have some pins here these are some needles actually not pins but this side is magnetic it is magnetic so when you are sewing hand sewing you can take this and you can use it to hold your needle but the other part that is so important, let me know in the chat. When you hand sew, do you sometimes have a problem with getting the needle through the fabric? If you do, it could be that the point of the needle is dull. It's not sharp. You may have to sharpen it, and that's what this is for. You put the needle through that center filling. Remember, it's not a dessert. It's named after a dessert, but it's not. But the center filling is what sharpens the needle. And you just push the needle in and you pull it out. Push the needle in and you pull it out. But it's actually doing two things at the same time. It's sharpening the tip of your needle, but it's also making smooth the shaft. If you've ever stitched something where you've been able to pierce the fabric, but getting it all the way through is a challenge. It could be that the needle has something on the shaft that's preventing the needle from going all the way through. And so it could be um, some residue from some product. But if you use this and go back and forth, you are sharpening the needle and you are smoothing out the shaft of the needle. Is that fantastic? All right, let's see what's happening here in the chat. Well, how about that? Hey, Sherry. Yeah, isn't that interesting? That is awesome, Deneen. I love this product. Isn't it great? It's such an awesome tool. So you have them, but you didn't know. Okay, great. Awesome. I read that already. All right, so back and forth. And then when you need to rest in between stitching, you just rest the needle and you won't lose it. I like having that option as a magnet, right? You can pick it right up, back and forth. And look at the size, it's a convenient size, great for travel. I know some of us take hand projects and we want to be able to travel with our projects. And this is small enough to carry in a little bag and to sharpen your needle, yes. and. Looks like a great product. Uh-oh, Wilda's telling that she's going to add it to her tool chest. She is convinced. Awesome. I just say this, ladies. 
like I said in the beginning, having the right tool for the task, having a tool that's going to help make our projects easier to make, right? We don't want to be frustrated and have a difficult time trying to stitch through something because the needle is dull when we can use something like the clover macaron to sharpen it, right? Okay, so next up, let's see who else is um, in the chat. Let me know if you have any questions. And I believe Alina is here from Clover. She may say hello. And if um, Alina, you can say hello. Let the ladies know that if they have any questions about any of the Clover products, Alina is there in the chat to answer your questions. Okay, so the next product has to do with patchwork. Now, you're probably wondering, why do we call this monthly series Tool Chest? Well, I got to thinking about it when Clover and I were having a conversation about doing a monthly live show. And since I love to teach and I love to share tools that are going to help us, I thought about like a, a mechanic, right? Or maybe your dad or your, your, your parent has in the house a toolbox, right? It's that toolbox that has all those tools that you use around the house, right? That when you need a tool to hammer a nail, you get that. If you, hello, so glad you're here. All right, wonderful. Good, wonderful. I'm so glad you said hello, Alina. Wonderful, so glad you're here. Uh, so your oldest daughter has a lot of hand sewing and I found something to add to her Christmas box. Wonderful, I'm so glad that you're gonna get the macaron, awesome. That's fantastic. So that toolbox in the house, that go-to box, so that's what I was thinking for us as makers, as sewers, that we have this go-to, go-to tool chest that are tools that help us when we need something for a specific task. And the next one is the roll and press. You know, there are multiple ways that we can press our seams, right? We can press our seams, let's go a little bit tighter here, with heat, dry, or wet, right? Or with heat or without heat. And I like to press at my sewing machine with a dry press. Before I go, a dry press and a heatless press. No steam, no heat, and I like to use a roller. And this is Clover's press, roll and press. I always get them to backwards, but it's the roll and press because you're going to roll it. And as you roll it, it presses. Let's look at a little video clip here. So here it is. I'm making a tote bag and I am pressing the seams at my sewing machine. I'm pressing them so that um, before I get to my iron, they are going to be ready to be pressed. But as I cold press, cold press my seams, I can continue to make the tote top or the quilt block. Yes, it is a great tool and I love it. Now, of course, you're seeing this video in triple time. I don't normally press that quickly, but in, in, to save time, I sped up the video. But this is why I like to have a cold press by my machine. Okay, so when I use this, look at the size of this. It's palm size. Yes, it does surprise you how well it works. It's so true. Look at this aeronomic design. I love that. And here, you see how it dips? Why do you think it dips right inside here? Let us know in the chat. Why do you think it dips? The roller is tapered. It's tapered so that most of the pressure is gonna go against the seam. So I'm curious to know, do you 
think that this is, it has a dip here so that our finger can rest right on, right here so that when we are pressing, we are applying pressure directly from our finger straight to this roller that's tapered so that it presses exactly where you want on the seam. If that's what you guessed, you are correct. <laughs> Here is two half square tri triangles that have been sewn together. And if I wanted to press this seam open, I can start to open it, right? And I can use this by pressing my finger in this area right here to press that seam open. And this would be at my sewing machine so I can then add the next section to my quilt block. And as you saw in the video, I would turn it over and then I would repeat. All right, Denine says it looks like she's going to buy some more tools for her tool chest. I love to hear that. <laughs> These are fantastic tools. They are thoughtfully made, and they are made with us in mind. You know, like Wilda says, she's been using Clover tools since the 1960s. And so we know that when we find a company that makes good tools because they're thinking of the crafter, of the sewer, we know we're going to have good results, right? Okay, wonderful. So don't forget, with every tool you get, always read the instructions so that you can see not only how to use it, but also the features that they describe because they want you to get the most out of it. And the same goes with these tools. So what's next in the carousel? And when I say carousel, if you're just joining me on YouTube, on Clover's YouTube channel, I am also live on Amazon. Clover has their products available on Amazon as a convenience for us, right? Easy shopping. It's nice to have multiple places to buy our favorite products. So on Amazon, there's a carousel. And many of the Clover products in this product carousel, tool carousel, are on sale. The Clover Roll and Press is 22% off. Awesome. All right. And the Clover Sweet and Sharp Macaron is also on sale. So if you're wondering, what is she talking about? What is Amazon Live? I'm going to quickly show you what that looks like. And you're going to see me being live. <laughs> it's going to be like a double me. So get prepared. <laughs> All right, so there I am. I'm live on Amazon right now. That is me. And then you're going to see me again, <laughs> right? And me again, because it's showing it over and over. But here is the carousel. I'm going to slide it back and forth. I'm sliding this back and forth live. Okay, there are the Clover products. And you would just click on that. When you are ready, you put it in your cart and you are ready to go. All right, just in case you didn't know what that was, I wanted you to know that. And if you are not following Clover's YouTube channel, you need to hit that follow button and follow them so that you will be notified the next time we go live for Craft and Sewing Tool Chest, right? It's once a month. Now, if you need to get to the Amazon Live so that you can find the specific products we're talking about today, all you have to do is put in your URL, tools.livingwaterquilter.live, and then you can go to that live stream and find all the products. Okay, just to let you know. All right, let's move on. We are going to talk about patchwork scissors. Okay, raise your hand in the chat. Let me know how many pairs of scissors do you have? How many pairs of scissors? Let me see. I have um, I have patchwork scissors. I have applique scissors. I have large shears. I have all kinds of scissors. 
count in your mind, count how many scissors you have and let us know by giving us a number in the chat. Do you have five different types of scissors? Three, four? Remember, we're talking about tools that are task specific. So here is the patchwork scissors. These are the mini, mini. They have a very sharp tip. Another reason why you want to always read instructions because these are sharp. And I saved opening. <laughs> Gidget said she has too many scissors. <laughs> yeah, hello, Jean. <laughs> too many to count, huh? Okay, so Deneen says she has four. Barbara says seven. And I think I'm going to add one more to your list, ladies. You're going to need this one for your tool chest. <laughs> This is patchwork scissors. Now, I don't know the science behind scissors, but I know those who are experts around it, when they make scissors for a specific task, that means the blades are made specific, are made in a certain way for the action that we want to accomplish. So for the patchwork scissors, these mini ones, when you look at the back, it says, all right, I'm going to need my glasses for this one. Um, it says pointed tip is perfect for fine cutting and trimming. Chenille. Have you ever made a chenille quilt when you have to cut, right, small snippets for applique and for other sewing crafts? So let's open this up together. do this right here live. Sometimes I like having scissors that are small when I need them to be small. You don't want to do a small type of task with very large scissors, right? So you get a, a protective sheath, sheath <laughs> because this is very sharp, very sharp. Right? You want to make sure that if this falls, it doesn't hurt anything or anyone. You want to make sure it's safe when you're storing it. So always cover with this protective sheath. So I like that that's included. And this is, this is leather. This is leather. Wow. Nice. This is a nice sheath. Nice cover. Okay. Let's do a real close-up look on these. This part is nice and wide. I like that. So I'm right-handed. This looks like it's good for both right hand and left hand. Let's see, do the instructions say that? Um, it does caution us to keep it away from children to be careful. Handle with caution because the blade tip is very sharp. The tips are very sharp. Alina, maybe you might know, is because I don't see it on the packaging. Maybe I missed it. Is it right hand and left hand use? Right hand and left hand use? The scissors are four and a half inches. Four and a half inches. Let's get some fabric here that we can trim. So since the point, the front is very, very, the tips are very sharp, it should cut Oh man, look at this. This is cutting this so easy, just like butter. Very little effort. That's the other thing about scissors. If scissors aren't sharp and well-maintained, you're going to need a lot of effort to actually cut. And you don't want that. Yes, left and right hand work great for her. So if you're left-handed, these work. If you're right-handed like me, they work. So I love that. Thank you, Alina. Yes. Okay, that is showing me. That is okay, I guess. <laughs> I didn't realize that. So let's see. Nice. It's Remember, it's also for trimming. So we're getting some nice cutting action with this. I like these scissors. Wonderful. 
Oh, so it's hard to find them for a lefty. You only have three pairs. Well, these will work for you. Um, these will work for you because these are both left hand and right hand patchwork scissors with a very sharp point. Left hand and right hand. All right. And as always, we want to be careful and do the right thing and put those in and be safe, right? So those are the patchwork scissors, mini patchwork scissors. So far, so far we've looked at a couple of patchwork um, tools, right? We looked at the roll and press. We've looked at the patchwork uh, scissors, the mini scissors. Next, we're going to look at another tool that someone mentioned earlier that's her favorite tool, and that's a seam ripper. And I like having a seam ripper, but I don't like having to have to use one. We always eventually will, right? A seam ripper. So this one, let's take a look at this one. I love having a good seam ripper that's going to be sharp, right? And I left it in the package so that you can see exactly how it will come. This is the Seam Ripper by Clover. And again, with my friends on Amazon, this is on sale. It is 15% off. And because it is sharp, it has a protective cover. We need a protective cover. Okay. Now, I don't want to take for granted that everyone here watching knows what a seam ripper is and how it's used. With a seam ripper, nice plastic handle here. It has this ridged area here that is like a, it's a rubber grip. It's not smooth like this part. So that means I can hold this so that when I use it, it's not going to slip out of my hand. So I like that. This part, look at this. This is very sharp. Look at that point. That point is very sharp. But also, do you notice this little itty bitty round thing right there? Let's see if I can stay still for a moment. That is also to protect your fabric. You don't want to tear the fabric when you are removing a seam with a seam ripper you are removing or breaking the stitching that holds the seam together you don't want to tear the fabric and this is to protect it from tearing the fabric so i have an example here you can also use this for buttonholes when you want to remove a button uh, not a buttonhole but thread that's be holding the button in place. I think you know what I mean, right? So this is your favorite one. All right, Gidget, you like this one. All right, you have it by your, one for your long arm machine and one for your sewing machine. So you're going to go underneath that stitch. And once you're underneath the stitch, you want to make sure you're not pointing toward the fabric because what are you going to do? You're going to tear your fabric. You're going to make sure you're pointing upward and away from your fabric when you break that stitch. So with a seam ripper, you have to be careful and not rush. Now, sometimes I will, and I'm sure we all have our own methods, but I will gently loosen the next seam or stitch so that I can then open it on the inside like this. So now the seam is coming apart and you can see the stitching. And we can also remove stitches this way. But remember, when you do that, you are taking a risk of tearing your project. So be careful when you do that. You want to be careful when you are using a seam ripper. You don't want to tear your project. But I like the way this one works. The size of it is just the right size. 
this part here works well within my finger, my thumb and pointy finger action. And again, always read the instructions when you get a tool. And when you're not using it, always put on the included protective cover. They give us that for a reason, right? We want to do that, put on the cover. Wonderful, all right. So that seam ripper, a seam ripper, clover seam ripper. It's one of those tools we need in our tool chest, right? We will eventually use them. Okay, I have a question for you. How many of you ladies have sewn something together and you thought, okay, I finally did it right. Then you went and you got your seam ripper, took it out, repositioned it, sewed it again and realized you did it wrong again. <laughs> I have done that several times. I think one project, I could not figure out how to sew it properly. And I had to take it out like six times. I think that's when you walk away, turn off the light, go do something else and then come back, right? <laughs> Okay, so the next item we're going to talk about is another patchwork item. And I think Wilda mentioned this, and they are patchwork pins. Oh, yes, Wilda says, been there, done that. So, yes, we do need a seam ripper. We have had to restitch something, use our seam ripper, stitch it again, stitched it wrong. <laughs> Yes, Deneen, yes, everyone's confessing. She has, yes, she has too. <laughs> and so that's why it's one of those tools in our tool chest. We will always need a good seam ripper. All right. <laughs> Gidget is laughing. <laughs> yes, that's a good description. A sewing fog. <laughs> yes, we can't seem to get that seam right. But that's how we get better, right? We get better from those challenges, mistakes. Yes, Barbara says several times, it is she has done it several times. And so I'm thankful for companies like Clover that think about that and know we're gonna need a good seam ripper. So we also need good pins. When we are doing patchwork, we need good pins. And there are all kinds of pins. Did you know that? They're different thicknesses. The shaft may be different, longer or thicker, heavier pin. Have you ever tried to use a fine pin with the wrong type of fabric and you just end up bending the pin? That's why it's good to know what kind of pin is gonna work with your patchwork, right? You want a good pin. So this is a patchwork pin. It's fine pin. It's, it is extra fine. These are extra fine and they are glass head. How many of you ladies use glass head pins? You can do what with a glass head pin? Let's see. Perhaps Wilder knows she's been using Clover products since the 60s, she said. So... Why would we want to use a glass head pin? This is a glass head pin. What is the advantage of a glass head pin and a pin that is fine, extra fine? This is a box of 100. All right, we're getting some answers. Wonderful. Wilda says that we can use a glass head pin because you can iron over them, yes, all day. You get a glass head that's yellow and blue in this package. You get 100 and they're extra fine. And this has a nice case. Barbara says, uh-huh, uh-huh. So we have someone that says 
that Alain, I'm not sure how to pronounce your name. Help me with that. I'm looking at your YouTube name and it says a Lorraine. Is that right? A Lorraine? When I was a Girl Scout leader, I helped the girls build some sewing boxes and a lot of what was purchased was clover products. Fantastic. Teaching them early. A sewing box. This is exactly what this live show is about having the right tools. So when you were teaching them, you were teaching about the tools that they were going to use over and over and that were going to help them with their projects. I love that. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Forgive me if I did not. Yes, you can iron over these glass head pins. You're right, Barbara. Isn't that fantastic? And I love the case. Let's take a look. It snaps closed, and then you see it has some depth to the case. It's deep. All right. Ah, we're getting some love from Clover. Yes. <laughs> oh, so Wilda says that she purchased these pins because of the glass heads and the extra fine size. Using thick pins is like driving a nail through your fabric. Words of wisdom there, ladies. Did you, did you see that? Extra fine glass head. So again, it goes back to task specific, right? We are making patchwork and we want to be able to easily pin our projects without struggling to get the pin through the fabric. We want to do it very easily. And sometimes we want to pin in one direction or we want to pin in another direction. You know that when you are pinning your project, I'm doing this. Let me try it this way. That way I will be successful. All right. So when we pin in this direction, you know we want to make sure that you remove the pin before you get to the sewing machine. Right here, when it's pinned in this direction, you don't have to remove it because the foot and the needle will not make contact with the pin, right? Okay. So Gidget says, I'm going to need some of these pins. Having the right tools, right? So you pin, you stitch. If you have to press something, the glass head, you can iron over these. Isn't that fantastic? So already, how many of you ladies are adding some of these tools we talked about today to your craft and sewing tool chest? Let us know in the chat. What tools are you going to add? And perhaps you need to reinvest and get some additional because for some reason, I don't know how, but pins tend to disappear. Have you seen that? They just kind of vanish. <laughs> so you end up having to get more, right? They seem to disappear. How that happens, I don't know. Let's see here. So which of these Clover tools let us know in the chat, how many of these do you already have? We've talked about six so far. Do you have all six of these tools? Or are you going to add some to your tool chest? So Wilda says she's definitely getting the macaron. Awesome. Wilda, I recall you attend my live show on my YouTube channel. And you like to do hand binding. So you probably want to use the macaron to sharpen your needle when you hand stitch your binding. Is that what you're going to use your macaron for? Let us know. Deneen says she is going to be adding all of the tools we talked about today to her tool chest. Fantastic. That makes me happy. That's exciting. I love good tools, ladies. We need good tools that are going to help us be successful with our projects without frustration, right? Uh, Wilda says, for sure, she's going to use 
her new macaron so that she can sharpen that needle, smooth out that shaft so that when she's hand binding, it's going to be easier for her to sew. Well, ladies, I am so glad we had this time together. <laughs> and this is the first of many shows. We, I'm going to put up the schedule again. If you're just joining me, we are going to have craft and sewing tool chest, a time to talk about the tools we like and need that are task specific to help us complete our projects. Here are the dates. Mark it in your calendar. Subscribe to Clover's YouTube channel so you can get notified. And you only get notified if you click the notification bell. And remember, you can also join me here on Amazon Live. I will continue this live stream. I have more tools to share, but I'm going to end it on Clover. Our portion for Clover has ended. We have looked at some fabulous tools that you can add to your tool chest. So Gidget says she's going to add four. Wonderful. Awesome. Let's see. Can I get that up there? There we go. All right. And Barbara says that she hand stitches. So she's going to perhaps get the macaron. I think that's what you're saying, Barbara. Fantastic. Hand work. The macaron is perfect for that because you're going to sharpen that tip. You're going to smooth off that shaft. Fantastic. So I'm so happy to hear that we talked about some tools that are going to help you and that you're going to add to your tool chest. So I will see you ladies who are on YouTube, on Clover's channel next time. And those of you that are watching on Amazon, we're going to continue. We have some more tools to talk about. And don't go away. We're going to end this segment and I will see you. Ladies, thank you for joining me. I'm so glad you were able to join us for the first, um, let's see, the first craft and sewing tool chest live show here on Clover's YouTube channel. I'm Geraldine Wilkins, and I'm so glad that we were able to spend this time together. Quilt Conversations Live, sponsored by Living Water Quilter. That's me. You can find me on all social media. Come check me out. But also sponsored by Clover. Clover Needlecraft. All the tools we talked about are by Clover. Thank you for joining us, and I will see you next month. And hello to my Amazon friends. So glad that you're here. I am glad that you have stayed 